Matt Rodkey, assistant principal at Homer Center Junior Senior High School and also the pandemic coordinator for the district is joining us. And Matt, we have another title for you, United High School Boys Head Basketball Coach, as you were recently hired by the United School Board to take over the Lions program, which happens to be your alma mater. You graduated at United. Can it be true, Matt, 1996? Has it been that long? <laughs> yeah, it's been that long. I guess that's, what, 24 years ago. <laughs> Athletic Director Colin Stokes told me that the position was opened in the spring. So tell us about your motivation for applying. Well, I've, I've always loved the game of basketball. Obviously played as a kid, as a lot of people have um, in our area. I did have a, who I think is a, is a great man and a very good coach when I played in high school, and his name was Craig Hetz. You know, I feel like a lot of the successes that I've been afforded in my life, I can kind of look back and think about the things that Coach Hetz taught us as far as being disciplined and working hard and being a good teammate and a team player and all of those things that I think we as coaches try to instill in our, you know, in our high school players. I feel like those things happened for me and United being my home town, so to speak. Um, it was just a great opportunity and I'm very excited for the opportunity and thankful to the school board of United there so that, that they gave me a chance. So you have a pretty full plate. You graduated from IUP in 2000 with a degree in secondary math. You got your master's in elementary and middle school in 2009 and principal certification in 2012, all at IUP. The Homer Center mm -hmm. basketball position was open where you're currently employed, but I know you told me off, Mike, you decided against applying for that for a couple of reasons, right? And one of them kind of plays into it, family. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm one of those people that, you know, family is very important to me, you know, one of the most important things in my life. And my daughter, Madison, actually just graduated from United, and she was the uh, salutatorian, very proud of her. And my daughter, Kylie, will be a senior this year. So in looking over the possibility of coaching basketball at Homer Center, and congratulations to Coach Pauly, by the way. He's a great man and a good coach, and he's going to do a great job there. I just decided not to because simply because looking at last year's schedule, United girls and Homer Center boys played about seven or eight eight games on the same night, and I just did not want to miss my daughter's games this year. So I thought that, I guess logically, hopefully, the schedules would work out at the same school district, and if there would happen to be games on the same night, I would assume they would most likely be a doubleheader, you know, varsity boys and varsity girls. So that played into the decision to not apply to Homer Center, but however... I think Coach Paul Poli is a great candidate, and he'll do a great job. Well, we don't have a schedule yet, but that'll be a fun night, right? It'll be a little bit weird when you uh, coach against <laughs> the uh, school district that you're employed with. <laughs> well, I'm just hoping to, you know, make a good showing there. And, you know, Homer Center has a great program and a great tradition. And, you know, to be able to, to coach against Coach Polly there and some of the, the boys who I'm fortunate enough to coach in some other sports, um, you know, particularly Ryan Sardone, what a great kid. Um, he actually called me and congratulated me and told me he was very happy for me. So, um, you know, those, those are the relationships that you form there um, in the district that you work at are just unbelievable. And, you know, I'm thankful for those. So, Speaking of coaching, you've coached AAU with high school athletes, junior high girls and junior high boys, as well as elementary basketball, both girls and boys. You've been head track coach at Homer Center. You've been involved uh, with the track program there in a variety of ways. And you've coached football as a varsity assistant for many years. And after a brief hiatus, you've rejoined Coach Page's football staff this year. So coaching is in your blood, and you must have a very patient wife. <laughs> My wife, I believe, will be up for sainthood soon. Um, and <laughs> I, I would, uh, you know, I would like to thank her for sticking with me and not getting frustrated. And, you know, she's always been very supportive. She goes to the games. Of course, like with my daughter's game, she'll probably be at school every night. Um, but those are things that we've sort of been doing for a long time. So, yeah, she's, she's great. And it'll be 24 years this August that we're married. So, yeah. Okay. Hey, you mentioned Coach Craig Hetz. I had so much respect for him. I remember well in the 1990s when he coached, and you used some terms that I would share. Uh, I, I know Coach Hetz was all about defense, discipline. Mm -hmm. At times, slowing the game down to a crawl, but he was very effective. <laughs> what are your takeaways from him and, and others that you've been around, and what style of basketball do you hope to play at United? Are we going to be back to 32-27 to 27 type scores? <laughs> well, if we're winning 32-27 to 27 at the end of a game, I think we'll all be we'll happy take it, that we right? won the game. Absolutely. I believe Coach Hetz always said his perfect game was either 2 nothing or one nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if he could hold the ball the whole time and get fouled and score at the end, that would be perfect for him. But, you know, he, he um, instilled defense in us, defense-first philosophy, and that's what I'd like to do. I know the uh, players that 
that are there right now at United there, a lot of them are pretty good scorers, and I'm hoping to just bring a defensive mindset to, to the program. So, yeah, we want to play some man-to-man, and like what I was basically taught with Coach Hetz, and, you know, we, we want to do our best to keep the other team's score as low as possible. <laughs> I had great respect for him and the type of teams that he put together. He got the most out of them, and I love man-to-man defense, and I've always said that's what, if you want to win the in the playoffs, you better be able to play man-to-man, and uh, he was all about that, wasn't he? He absolutely was. From from day one until the last day that I played for him, you know, that was that was what we did. We always would grind the games out, just had to be tough, and, you know, take charges and play good help defense and play basically team basketball because – you know, honestly, some of the teams that we played on, we weren't the most talented teams in the area, but I feel like we, we made a good showing. And um, I was fortunate in my sophomore year to play on a team that made the state tournament. And we probably, like I said, weren't over, more talented than some of the other teams around. But, you know, coach made us work hard every day, you know, instilled that discipline in us. And a lot of the players on that team have been very successful in their lives. So, again, like I attribute much of what, what I've been able to accomplish to him. I remember the games back then. Homer Center had a coach by the name of George Sokoski who very much uh, had the same types of philosophies. And those were two teams, you know, back then that would really go at it, get, you know, got after it defensively. It was fun to watch. Yeah, it definitely was. Coach Sokoski, actually, my mother in law um, was his secretary down at High Ridge Water Authority. Oh. So I was able to uh, talk to George, you know, a few times and He's always been a very supportive guy, and you know, he's, I know he's coached at the college ranks a little bit as well. But um, yeah, he's he, defensive mindset for sure. They were very similar people, and you know, very tough guys. And I know they expected a lot out of their athletes. You'll return a nice nucleus that includes four seniors, seven juniors, including the team's uh, leading scorer from last year, Austin Kowalczyk, who averaged over 16 points a game. He'll be a senior. Many contributors from last year's team that finished 11 and 14, won a game in the District 6 playoffs and gained valuable experience. So it's always nice when you open the cupboard and there's tools at your disposal. Yeah, that's right. It, it, there are a lot of good players there. Um, Austin, for one, of course, was, I believe he was second team all Gazette this year and um, he, he was their leading scorer last year. So a uh, good rebounder, good assist guy too. I think he was second on the team in assists last year looking through the stats. There's other, other seniors coming back. You know, Hunter Cameron, he's just a great athlete. Really good running back there, of course. You got a kid, Joey Means, who got a good bit of playing time last year. He's a good shooter. And um, Levi Cruz, who's a senior as well, who is working hard. Um, didn't get a whole lot of playing time last year, but I think he'll put that effort into it and you know get some time this year. So, Well, Matt, we congratulate you being named the United Lions head basketball coach on the boys' side, and uh, we wish you the best. I'm going to shift gears, if I can, for a moment and take okay. you back to your full-time job at Homer Center and just maybe touch on the return to school plans. I know you're the pandemic coordinator spearheading the team at Homer Center, and I'd like to ask you how you and the team at Homer Center are advancing plans while at the same time monitoring the pandemic. It has to be a difficult balance that seemingly changes by the minute. It definitely is. It's it's a very fluid situation. Um, we actually have our reopening phase plan sent out to our board to uh, look over and hopefully approve at their meeting. Yeah, as you said, it's it's been tough. It seems like every day something else changes. That plan will certainly be a living, breathing document that we will most likely as we get closer and closer to August, we, we'll be updating. You know, certainly we want every kid to be able to go back to school normally and get that in in-class education that everybody really wants. Again, we hope to be live in person, and that may be wishful thinking, but, you know, everybody wants to be in the school building full-time, and that's what we'd love to happen. I was going to ask, how confident are you about a return to the school building? And maybe even more importantly, how important is it for our children to return to the classroom, you know, for education purposes, for uh, socialization, those types of things? Yeah, I, I do think it's very important. I think that our kids need to have that socialization aspect. And, you know, it, it was a, a really trying time for them. You know, those, these situations where it's just something completely different that it really wears on people. And I, we really would like the kids to be able to come back just for that socialization period, just to get used to that sense of normalcy again. You know, sometimes we say, you know, academics are, are often second whenever things like mental health and those sorts of things uh, occur and need, you know, a little bit more help. Yeah, it's something that we certainly 
are excited about, and we want <laughs> we want that green phase to continue through. But you know, looking a, a little bit west of us here, some things aren't going real well. So I'm I'm hoping that people are socially distancing, wearing their masks when they're in public, and and doing all of the things that you know we're asked to do, so that we can try to slow down the the spread again. Summer activities are underway at many, if not all, area schools. And as pandemic coordinator and as an assistant football coach, I know I've seen you at some of the evening workouts. How difficult of an adjustment has it been in getting ready for each summer workout? And how have the coaches and players adapted, in your opinion? Well, I think our coaches have done a really good job. Each one of them have a, a mobile thermometer. You know, we take the temperature of each kid as they come into the to the facility. The kids are doing a nice job wearing their masks. We ask them to wear their masks when they come. As coaches, we have our masks on. You know, we should, probably shouldn't be screening people if, without a mask just in case. And, you know, we ask them a certain number of questions and things have gone well so far. We haven't had to actually worry about COVID yet because we haven't had anybody with any of the symptoms or anything. We're really hoping that that doesn't occur. Um, but yes, our kids have done a nice job. They understand. They've been very respectful about wearing their masks and you know we haven't had any issues with any of those things and as you said before just about the socialization aspect I think that our kids will basically do anything that they can to be able to play sports and you know get back to normal and I think our community wants those same things. Two quick things we have about a minute left. Uh, Mm -hmm. Are you aware of any cases at area schools uh, as things have began to ramp up with activities? I'm not aware of any cases um, with students. I know there have been, I believe there's a case or two in the county currently, but that's that's the only knowledge that I have at this non, point. Non-students. That, that's what my understanding is. I haven't heard of a student that has COVID in any of our county schools at this point. Chuck's looking over my shoulder, too. He's, how confident are you we're going to see high school football this fall? Oh, boy. I I think that we're going to play it. I just, it would. it's hard to see a fall in Western Pennsylvania without football. So I maybe, again, maybe that's some wishful thinking, but I just feel like if people are doing things the right way, if they're wearing their masks, if they're socially distancing, if they're washing their hands all the time, we can slow this spread back down and give our kids that opportunity to experience one of the greatest things in their lifetime, probably, and, and that's uh, high school athletics. So my confidence level, I'd say, hope I'm hoping 90 percent. But there again, that could be wishful thinking. But I'm I'm an always a uh, you know glasses half full type of guy. Yeah, uh, me too. And the good news is hospitalizations, for the most part, other than a couple of hot spots, are way down. The mortality uh, rate is way down. So I think there has been a lot learned through this pandemic, and uh, we certainly, I know, we all can't wait to to get back to normal. Thanks for doing this. Congratulations on being named the head uh, boys basketball coach. I know as an employee of Homer Center School District, all of the Homer Center family will be rooting for you to succeed, probably except on a couple of occasions. <laughs> probably about two day, two uh, games a year, I'm sure, and that's <laughs> completely understandable. <laughs> so, thanks, Matt. Thank we'll, you very much. I appreciate it. We'll see you soon. All right, thanks. That's Matt Rodkey, assistant principal at Homer Center Junior Senior High School, also the pandemic coordinator. He has his hands full, and he has a new job, the head basketball coach at his alma mater at United. For Indiana in the morning, I'm Mark Burdig reporting. I'm Mark Burdig reporting.